Hello, welcome to my tech one, another CD printer review video. This is Anycubic Cobra 3 Combo, and this is the first printer from the Anycubic company, but this box is sent to me by the Geek Buying in exchange for the review. I will place a link directly to their store down in the description. This is the fast bed slinger with multicolor system, and it is able to print at 600 mm per second speed. This is the advertised speed. Probably the printing speed is lower a little bit. 250 mm is in X, Y direction, the build volume, and in Z direction, 260 mm. And it has all those uh, regular features like outdoor bed leveling, vibration compensation. It can measure pressure in the nozzle. And also the multicolor system can actively dry the filament, so it can be heated up. We can use it as a filament dryer, and this makes it great for the PTG filaments too. The maximum temperatures are 300 degrees Celsius on the nozzle and 110 on the bed. Let's see what's in the box. This was the content of the package. This is the main unit and it is almost completely assembled. Even the gantry is assembled to the base. This is the multicolor system, screen, extruder. Then we have two power cables, probably one for the unit and the other is for this multicolor system, which is also a filament dryer too. Then we have some bolts and tools and this is the spool holder if you don't want to use the multicolor system. Ah yes, I forget to mention, the 10 meters of white PLA. <laughs> you know my opinion about this kind of sample filaments. Now this is not completely new printer on the market, so this will not be detailed assembling or analyzing video. Uh, mostly I want to check how it prints to see its quality, mostly with PLA and PETG, because this can be heated. And also I want to see the reliability of printing in colors with this multicolor system. The extruder cable looks like USB Type-C, interesting. Be careful, these are M2 bolts, don't over tie them. Now we're installing the screen and I'm not sure, is this cable symmetric? There are no marks on it. Actually later I saw on a cable there is a sign this side up. Installing the X cable and cable holder. The purge viper from the back side. Next to step would be installing the filament tube and the spool holder, but I have to skip this step because I will use the multiple colors. Actually, this color unit must be on the left side of the printer. I'm not sure why I wanted to place it on the right side. Deja vu. There is a space for the silica gel, but the desiccant is not included. Pity. Now this cable to connect the printer with the multicolor system is on the front side. Not too practical solution, it would be much better if it would be on the left side or back side of the printer. Installing the Teflon tubes and it is important to push them deep enough until the line. Connecting the Teflon tubes, doing some cable management. This is the back side of the multicolor unit. Oh, I think this was the hardest part, but it looks ready now. And now I have to check these exciting nuts on these wheels. On X and Y they are from metal, but on the Z these are from the rubber or plastic and this is loose. On the Y axis I can see they are loose and it is hard to access to them with this small open end wrench. I thought I would never do this kind of things again. It is hard to access to this. I will do this off camera. Okay, finally, this is so outdated thing, incredible. Setting the belt tension is easier with this tensioner, only you need some minimal experience to know when it is enough. And this is for the Y-axis. This one is a little bit loose, but here I can easily set it correctly. Okay. Checking the voltage switch, and in my case it is set correctly. And now I can connect two power cables and the hardware installation is finished. Let's turn on the printer and I'm always curious if it has the standby position. Mm, not too quiet, I can hear the fan from the bottom. Interesting, it could connect to the 2.4 GHz network, but to 5 GHz, yes. Okay. 
After scanning the QR code, I installed the Anycubic app. It asks for this U disk. It's doing some homing or something like that. It's preparing for the auto leveling, so it is preheating the nozzle, then it will do the wiping of the nozzle and then the probing or something like that. Input shaping or resonance detection. So far I've inserted uh, two filaments. This is Polytera PLA in some white marble color and this is PLA Meta from the Bamboo Lab. Currently I didn't see any warning that it cannot accept cardboard spools, but if I find some in the meantime you will see it on the screen. 39 minute benching, not too fast, but let's start with that. Choosing the color, I will choose the Polytera PLA, which is on the first slot. Entering the info about inserted spools. Project material, oh, it was fast. <laughs> It's hard to see, but maybe the Z offset is a little bit too high, but I will leave it as it is, I will analyze it later and it's printed. As I mentioned, I didn't change the Z offset, just see what kind of settings we can do. Probably here we can change the bed and nozzle temperature. Let's see what's under the settings. LED and Z offset, okay. But as I mentioned, I didn't change this. Here we can change the fan settings. This is probably the speed, uh, standard, quiet and sport, okay. The noise from half meter distance. Approximately 55-56 decibels. This is not bad, this is a relatively quiet printer, but I think it can go much faster here. But at this speed it is, let's say, quiet. It's printed a few seconds ago, immediately better collision check. Actually it is good. I will analyze the first layer when it goes down. Actually the first layer is not bad, I can see the texture from the build surface. Uh, this means that the Z offset is okay. The overhang is good, but this is quite slow benchy. Maybe just I can see a little bit more stringing that I would like to see with this slow benchy. But I found here the speed benchy and for this I will change the filament. In the name I can see speed benchy HSPLA and the time is uh, 12 minutes approximately. 240 degrees Celsius. And for this printing, I will use the Hyper PLA from the Creality. Okay, compared to the previous one, this is a completely different story. The layer is finished in only a few seconds and the whole desk is shaking. Okay, it could be a little bit better, but it's okay. It is quite obvious that this is optimized for the speed. I can see from this top surface that it used a bigger layer height. But for example, I can see less stringing on this material. So probably this stringing is a result of the old PLA. But overhang came out good. The first layer is also good. So basically not bad for 12 minute benchy. Just few more printing prepared in the factory. This is a flexible shark. And I will use this metallic PLA. It looks like they use the brim with this flexible shark, and which is not good because it is hard to clean this brim after the printing between those gaps. It already cooled down, and that was easy. 10 minutes of cleaning and it's finished. Color for shark beer something, it would be good to see the whole title. This reminds me on the old and the threes where we have this problem. This is in, I don't know, two or three colors and the printing time only 23 minutes. Okay, let's print this and we will see how much waste material we will have. Here I made a mistake by leaving different mm. filaments. I'm not really sure what I did wrong. Theoretically I should have here two colors, but this is only in one color. Maybe I did something wrong at the start, but theoretically I can see here three colors. It doesn't look like a two color printing. But it has the perch tower and this material. Okay, let's try one more time. So this is that color for shark. And uh, here I should give it the materials. Aha, uh -huh. maybe I can see here two colors and uh, number two is given here. Okay, let's try to change this one to... I hope it will be different now. Yes, it was my mistake, so now the shark is in two colors. Also the wipe tower is in two colors and we have a lot of purge material. 
and of course the printing time will be much slower now. Printed in 1 hour and 4 minutes, so more than 2 times slower than this one. But don't forget here also we had that uh, perch tower, but uh, we didn't have this amount of the waste. But what is more important with this kind of printings is the reliability. I mean we have no choice with the printing times or, or the waste material, but it is very important to finish this without any problems because if we, we have some bigger object with I know 500, 1000 filament changes, then the reliability is very important. I connected the printer with the app using this QR code and uh, it don't have the camera so I'm curious if I can easily connect this Logitech USB web camera. There is one available USB port here. And there it is. It's quite fast because it uses the local network currently. I want to try to print something directly from the app. I'm not sure is it possible. I have to download it. I found this cute owl and I can see the option save or print. Let's try the print. Online slicing, great. This online slicing was a little bit slow, but it works. Let's start the printing. And after 15 minutes it finally started. This is way too slow. I can see by default the supports are enabled, but for this model it's not really necessary. That's why I like better to use the computer slicer. In slicer I can control the printing, but I can also see the picture from the camera. Printing is at 70%. Let's analyze the objects. Uh, side surfaces look nice. I can see the texture on it. Uh, bottom surface is also nice, except here on the top surface. I can see some smaller holes and I'm not sure why. Maybe they have only one covering layer, but this is what I don't like when I don't have the control over the slicer. I will re-slice this object using the computer slicer and I will reprint it to analyze this top surface. This is Anycubic Slicer, very similar to Bamboo Studio, where I prepared this STL file of the cute owl and uh, I can see that I will have several covering layers here on the top and I'm sending it over the network. I have to go to my workplace, but using the app I can supervise the printing even when I'm not home. It was finished without supports and now let's compare these two objects. Oh, it was completely removed. Side by side, this is the older one and the side surface looks equal. The bottom surface too, only here I don't have the brim. And let's see the top surface. And it looks much better now, so here I don't have those holes which I can see here. So the slicing was better. One more thing I noticed with this unit, and that's uh, we don't have that big tension on the filament itself and it's disabled. And it is an advantage because if you use some brittle filament, it may break inside the Bamboo Lab AMS units, for example, both uh, light and the regular version. Here that tension is much lighter. It's time to print something from PETG and I have here three different materials. Everyone, Amazon Basics and this is Prusum and PETG. Wow, this prusum and spool almost doesn't fit here on this space. I will measure it later. But unfortunately this Amazon Basic is too wide. But I have a replacement for this. This is Bamboo Lab HF PTG. 72 mm is the maximum size which can still fit in. 74 mm not. I found that here in the material we can enable the drying and we can set the drying time and the temperature. Mm, we have some preset values for PTG, okay. Ah, now I understand why it screams that it will solve the filament because it still thinks that the peel inside. Let's change this. This is just a short string test which I like to do with PTG filaments. And usually on this string test it starts uh, good, but later when the diameter will be smaller, then we will see some stringing, but the question is when. But I also have to check the different settings temperatures, because it wanted to print this PTG on 210 degrees Celsius. And the printing is finished. This stringing is very minimal. And now three color printing with PETG and this is an element for the bicycle for my youngest daughter. I'm playing here with the coloring of this object. And um, it looks okay, but I don't like these lines are not connected in a black color. And I'm confused because uh, we already have that with the Cura and with the Prusa slicer, that adaptive layer thickness, so this should be filled. We will see how it looks like printed. Mm -hmm. 
I hope Stratasys is not watching this video. I mean, look at this heated bed, perch tower. I hope they will not sue the Anycubic. Sounds funny. Where do you do this video? Bamboo Lab. Just search for it. Ah, in the meantime, the printing is finished. So for this 2mm thick object, we have this perch tower and we also have this face material, which is actually not bad, but if this object would be taller, well in that case, uh, this amount would be much bigger. Actually, the object is not bad, there is no color mixing, only I don't like that these lines are not connected, which I already noticed during the slicing. And what is this for? Well, to cover these sharp edges of this metallic plate and the PTG is my second favorite material after ASA for the outdoors. Not the best design, but it will do the job. And now back to PLA and I want to reprint this cute owl, but now I'm playing with the colors. The head will be white, the eyes will be black and the beak will be red. And now this time the printing time will be much longer, almost three hours compared to the one hour. But only on these two elements we have multiple color changes. So far the progress is good because you don't have the color changes at this height. Later it will have, so that's why it's preparing the wipe tower. And actually now it started with the color changes and more time it will spend with purging the material than with the printing. Now I have to go to my workplace and the rest of the printing will be supervised over the app. Printed in 3 hours and 6 minutes. I can see some lines from the oozing. Not a big deal, but it's there. And this is the amount of the waste material and don't forget that we have the color changes only on this part here. This and basically this top part is only in one color. Now some final thoughts. Of course the main competitor here is the Bamboo Lab A1 with the AMS light. I think any cubic could improve a little bit on the softer side. For example, I noticed a few smaller bugs in the slicer, those PTG profiles are quite strange and similar. The app works more or less fine, but uh, I noticed that probably their server is overloaded from time to time. For example, sometimes I couldn't see the picture from the camera. About the printer itself, I actually like it and I like that it is fully automatic, not even the Z offset we have to adjust, so everything is prepared automatically, except those V-slot wheels and eccentric nuts. So this is not my favorite linear motion, whatever it is from metal or from rubber, and not something for the beginners to so adjust those Bislot wheels and similar. And now about this multicolor system, and this is where it is better compared to the AMS light. First of all, it is closed, but also it can be actively heated, so we can use it as a filament dryer. But also I mentioned that earlier in the video that um, there is a smaller uh, pressure on the filament when it's powered off. For example, with the Bamboo Lab AMS, both light and the classic, I had that accident that when I have some brittle filament inside several days, it will break inside because of that bigger pressure on the filament. But here that pressure is much smaller and hopefully we can leave those brittle filaments too in the AMS unit without using it. About that multicolor printing. Yes, we could compare the printing times and the waste material, but it is very similar. I mean, this is the limitation of this technology, which uses the same nozzle for this uh, filament changing. Uh, where I think uh, that it is worth using this AMS are smaller objects, or if you can, then try to spread the objects along the X and Y axis on the print surface. For example, if you print a small dice or you print 30 dices, in both cases, the additional time and the waste material will be equal. So in percentage, it is much better to print more objects, of course, if you need <laughs> 30 dices in this case. Well, this was my experience uh, with this unit. So I think that uh, if you print a lot of PETG materials, in that case, this really worth uh, difference, not the Bamboo Lab, but using the Anycubic because of this multicolor system. If you have some other experience with this machine, then write me a few lines down in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy printing.